Hello, Oli. How are you? Good evening. Good evening, Oli. How was your day? Fine. What did you do today, Oli? Uh, fine. Mm, very bad. I, my son, but my day gay, my son, the vacunix, and the fiebre. Okay, my son, the vaccine. Vaccine. The vaccine? The vaccine, and he has a fever. Uh, the reaction. Yeah. Yes. See you? Yes. How old is your son, Oli? Um, a three. Three? Yes, three. He's very small, your son. <laughs> I know, I did 14 A's years old. Three, your son is three years old. Uh, my son, I 12. 12. 12. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. Next, uh, I see. I, I understand. And only what, what is three years old? I. Well, I don't know, but I I heard you say three, or no. Three. Uh, I have three, three some. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yes. Yes. I fear. Uh, twelve. Uh, fear. Twelve. No. Then. Uh, I. Uh, Twenty. 20 or I song a second um, 21 e, um, 3 is 22. And they are old? Yes, all. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, 14 A's. You? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's yes. And is this is the first vaccine for your son or the second vaccine? Uh, first. Still my son. The first. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Second. Ah, the second vaccine. Yes. Okay. Direction be bad. Very bad. But is I I not as time as husband husband now. <laughs> I know. I see. I see. No, <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> Today is your son. Yes. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, Edwin, Elena, Elena, how are you? Good evening, teacher. I'm fine. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. What did you do today, Elena? And today I. I do home office and I prepare a plan and continue to the the this the instruction and design for the lesson of the course for education and what else? Only that. Okay, okay. Good. That's good. And you, Edwin? Hi, teacher. How are you? Good, Edwin. I'm okay. Good evening, everybody. What happened today, Edwin? Nothing. I just stay home and doing some cooking and relax. Okay. It's my day off. My day off. Ah, today was your day off. Yeah. Hey, that's nice. It's a good yeah. time to relax. Yeah, see some movies. I put me, I take a shower. Relax. Good, good. And you, Roxanne, and... how was your day? Um, it was great, teacher. 
I did many things in my house and I was, I am a little tired, but it's a pleasure to study with, with you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you guys. And it's great because that is what we're going to be using today. Today, we're going to be talking about what happened. What did you do? Today, we're going to be looking at the past perfect. This is in 4.8. So the objective is to use the past perfect tense. And what is the past perfect tense? Is this, is when one action happened before the other. The past perfect action is the first action. The ing or the simple past is the second action. Is that okay? Yes. All right, let's watch the video to make sure we have some examples and understand. Hi everyone, by the end of this class, you'll be able to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. For example, I went to a party last weekend, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. I'll explain the structure in a little bit, but the most important thing to remember about this topic is how and when to use it. Therefore, I would like to spend a few minutes giving lots of examples. So if um, we write the example that I, I gave to you in uh, just a couple of seconds ago, um, I, let me write that down. I went to a party last weekend, but uh, when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. Okay, so if we think about that example there, what I'm doing is I'm talking about two events that occur in the past. And it's important for me to relate the two because that will uh, emphasize my idea. It will outline what I'm trying to express. I went to a party last week. This is what took place last weekend. So that is that X, if you will, all right? But when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in a different color. Um, my friends had eaten all the food. This is the event in the circle that you see there. This happened before I got to the party. So whenever I say I went to a party last weekend and my friends ate all the food, what that means is that I went to the party. And when I got there, there was food at the party. And then my friends ate it. But that's not really what I want to express. What I really want to explain is that I went to the party and there was no more food left because something had happened before that. And that was the fact that my friends ate the food. So that's why this is really important. You need to know when to use this particular topic. So I'm going to continue to uh, give you more examples. Now let's look at the examples on the chart. As you can see, the examples on the chart um, refer to uh, basically it's a it's a person that uh, was at the gym and uh, he forgot to lock his locker and therefore this is what took place right? as we'll analyze the examples that are there I was working out and I had put my stuff in my locker all right wait let, let's stop there for a second I was working out is the past event that's that X if you will what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relate the second event to that past event and I have put my stuff so what they're saying with all of these examples and things is really that we use this specifically for two events for two actions and the first action is always going to be the one that had 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 in the past participle is not important the order in the sentence had in the past participle is going to be the blue circle, is the first action. The past tense or the past continuous is going to be the second action, the X, right? That's going to be the second action. The first action always is the one with had in the past participle. So do you look at the examples? You had, I had put my stuff in my locker. This is the idea first, the blue, you put the stuff in the locker. Then 
you go to the gym, I was working out. This is the idea for it. Is this okay? Uh, yes, teacher. Okay, let's watch the rest of the video. So th that I have put my stuff in my locker is the past perfect event that happened before this past event. So it's that little blue circle that you see there. When I came back, that's that event there. That's the uh, past event. Okay. Someone had stolen my wallet. So um, I came back, but before this event, someone had stolen my wallet. They were able to steal it. That's the past event. So that's that X, if you will. Because I had forgotten to lock the locker. All right, now that is the past perfect event, as you can see there. Let me just give one last example here. I didn't have any money because I had forgotten my wallet. So what I want to explain is that I didn't have any money, but I want to give a reason on why I didn't have any money. So I'm talking about two events from the past. One is that I didn't have any money. That's that X that you see there. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, highlight that in a, a, let me go ahead and highlight that in a greenish color. Okay. All right. Okay. So here, really, what is the idea? Is first you forgot the wallet. And then you didn't have any money. Why you didn't have any money? Because you forgot your wallet. This is the first action. Always the action with had is going to be the first action. It's okay? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. It's okay. okay. Good. So now we have how to make them the same idea, but how to make it positive or negative. The same thing. So when you use had, word, you're going to have the ideas always with the verb in the past participle. Let's watch a little bit about negatives and positive sentences. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. So we use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure, and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're going to have a subject, and then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be had, as you can see there, color. I think the explanation is too long and boring, but this is the idea. The idea is only have had, and then this is the first action. Then the second verb can be in the simple past or the past continuous, whatever happened in the past. So. Here we have two situations. You forgot to put the stuff in the locker, right? I had forgotten to lock the locker, okay? So my wallet was stolen. So what happened first? Your wallet was stolen or you forgot to lock the locker? What's going to be the first action? You I have forgotten. forgotten. That's right. First, you had forgotten to lock the locker. Then, right, or when you can use another way, for example, here, it says, when I came back, when I returned, someone had stolen my, walk my wallet. So if we see the sentence is not in order, but with the grammar, we know that the had stolen is the first action. That is the first activity that happened because always is going to be the first one. If you use negative, the negative is not going to be a, in the participle, it's going to be right there, hadn't or had not. So what can be some of the examples that we have? 
So here we have, I hadn't locked my locker. So that means you didn't do this before your wallet was stolen. That's how we're going to use the idea for the past tense. So I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work on time. So this means that you first, you didn't finish the work. And then the consequence is you couldn't or you didn't leave work at that time. Is this part okay? Yes? Yes. Okay, yes. All right. good. And now we just have the last one. How do we make questions? Ah, this one is a little bit trickier, right? Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to form questions using the past perfect tense. So let's get started. I would like to start off by presenting the formula, if you will, in order to form past perfect questions. So let me include the formula now to this document, and then I'm going to write a couple of questions, and then we're going to try to make sense of those two questions there. So let me start off by having a yes or no question. And then we're going to try to make sense of this particular question, of course, following this formula that we see here. So first of all, um, if we have a yes and no question, I will start by using have. That's the auxiliary verb. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and color that real fast just to make sure that we are understanding this particular topic. I think I'm using green color there. Yeah. And then um, this follows the subject. In this case, this happens to be you. So let me put a little blue color there. Uh, then uh, we will use the past participle of the verb that we're using. So in this case, it's the verb study. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we have a complement. So that uh, in black, you see that that's the complement of this particular. Okay, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at how we're using it, right? We're using had, had you studied, the had, you and the verb in the past participle. This means this action before taking the class or any other word that you want to use. It's only for the order, if the things happen first or next. The second, you can use also WH. For example, where had you studied English? What place did you study before taking an English class there? Okay, so all of these locations, where, what, how, it's possible to make WH questions. The only difference is that you need to use the word had. That is the only thing that is different. Is that okay, guys? Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what are we going to do? First, we want to make sure that we understand the concept and that we don't get confused. So we're going to do that by doing the following exercise. Let me share the screen so that you and your partner know what to do. Okay, so for this one, this is 4.11. The videos that we watched were the four, all of these videos about how to make the questions, how to make the ideas for the negative and so on. Now we're going to be looking at 4.11 where is using the correct form, the simple past, the past continuous or the past perfect with your partners you're going to read and this verb or these idioms in the parentheses you need to put in the correct form in the past in the past continuous or in the past perfect in order to complete the sentences is that okay yes teacher all right so 4.11 Let's try with our partners to complete those different activities.
The answer to the previous question was yes. And then we went and uh, we asked a second question. Where had you studied English before taking this class? So what I would like for you to do now is to practice making lots of questions in order to make sure that you're understanding this particular topic. like for you to do next is I would like for you to practice this concept, practice making my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, try to see if I, can, if I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone Right, so uh, I should color this maybe blue, or the same thing as it's in red, the auxiliary verb is in red, and then the past participle is uh, the verb that we're going to use, and uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had, and then the past participle of the verb, in this case, is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence uh, that we want to emphasize, and so let me do that right now. Okay, so we have, I have forgotten to lock the locker. So uh, once again, we have the subject in that sentence is I, excluder verb have, the past participle of the verb forget, it's forgotten, and then the complement becomes to lock the locker. Now quickly what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect. Let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart, so I'm going to make those and I'm going to try to um, make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Um, so the structure to make negative sentences, negative statements or negative sentences, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, guys. Any questions about it? Not question. I need to memorize the verbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's true. This is what happens. 
right? It's only about memorizing the activities. Okay, so we have several different areas that we're talking about. The past, past continuous, simple, uh, and the past perfect. Tell me, when do we use the simple past? What's the idea for the simple past? We use a, a simple past to express uh, the action start um, ending in the past. Okay. Good, so we have the different things. So we have the idea for, okay. Let's go over a little bit so that we're, we're clear and that we understand the different concepts of all of three of them. Okay. So when we talk about simple past is we talk about an action that is completed, all right, or an action that is finished in the past, usually at a specific time or a specific event. That's the simple past. When we talk about past continuous, we talk about an action that is incomplete in the past. Simple past, complete. Past continuous, incomplete. In the past perfect, we talk about two activities that happened in the past. In the past perfect is going to be the first activity, and the simple past is the second activity, or the past continuous is the second activity. Okay, so from what you understand and what you read, how do we make the past perfect? How do we make the past perfect? Good evening, teacher. Uh huh. Good evening. I have good got evening. Good evening, Helio. I have got from work. Ah, that's excellent, Helio. Is yes. working. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's let's review some of the questions before we go on. Then, for example, here. Okay. So we have a thief break into our house last night while my sister and I were picking up a pizza for dinner. What is the correct? Simple past, past continuous, or past perfect? Simple past. I think it's a past perfect. I think it's simple past. <laughs> simple past. I think it's simple past because in the second one, you use while, and while my sister and I were picking up a pizza for dinner, another action happened. Or interrupt, interrupt, interrupt. The, 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 the other. A thief broke into our house last night. That is correct because the two actions are happening. But first you go for the pizza and then the thief broke into the house. That's why simple past. Very good. What about here? What about this one? I guess we. Uh, it's a uh, past perfect. Ah, listen. Past, past perfect. Perfect. Have, have left. Just because first you leave the door, mm -hmm. then the thief got into the house. It's not that the thief going first and then unlock the door. No, the thief unlocked. The, uh, the thief got into the house and then unlocked it. That's what we mean with the past perfect had. And then, yes, okay. Okay, there's number two. So in conversation two, we have, for example, I with some friends yesterday and lost my key. Ah, yeah. I, was, I, I was shopping. Exactly, because you are doing this and the partners are doing a different action, not together, this is the idea, okay. What about luckily? I have left, I have given. Correct, we can use, I had given uh, because this action happened first and then the next action, my partner came to the party. Yeah. Okay. And last one, the number three, take a look at it. 
why the simple past in number three and the past perfect in the next one? Um, I was driving around with friends uh, and day and something. I ring, ring, simple past. Okay, because I wrote past. Past is this one happened? Okay, when you were driving around, not before, not after you were driving around, happened while you were driving around, and that's the simple past. And the last one, the luckily, we can see that this first is necessary. Is obligation first bring your cell phone, and then you can call your brother for help. That's the. I, that's I, luckily, I have bro, my cell phone with me. Yes, but the pronunciation here brought. I I have a bro a bro, with T brought. Brought, yeah, brought. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have brought. Excellent. So those are all of the activities that we have in unit four, okay? Before we continue, we're gonna practice a little bit, right? We're gonna tell your partners the things that you did last year. Last year, what did you do before the pandemic? Ah, this is I had, okay? What did you do during the pandemic? Ah, this is the past continuous. I was working, I was studying, I was. And then what are you going to do? the interrupt during the pandemic or after, this is going to be the simple past, okay? So the first action is the past continuous. Sorry, the first action is the past perfect. The second action is going to be the past continuous, right? And the third one is going to be the simple past. Teacher, you can share with us an example, please. Yes, yes, yes. I'll put it in the chat so that it's easy. Okay, so last year, okay, I had this is the first thing that happened. The last year, the first thing that happened was I had seen the news in China. Okay, or I had seen the news about China. First, I saw the news. Okay. When or what happened next? Ah, I was working at a school. This is the action that I didn't finish. This is the action that I had started first. Why didn't I finish it? Uh, I didn't find it. I, I didn't finish it. When? Okay, missing the team. Okay. So what's the idea? What's the idea? Elio, what did you say? Elio, what did you say? Marina, I just listened to you. Okay, okay. Yeah. Then okay, the last okay. one, then the last one, is the current current okay. so first had first is the first action had, i saw the news uh, saw the news China. China. the second action is the, the second you, action is the wait you, you were wait, doing you were when, doing when and the third one is and the third one interrupt is, what the first action you were doing Teacher, sorry, I can't Teacher, sorry, understand. I can't understand. I can't. I can't. I can listen to you, <laughs> teacher. Okay. What about now? Now Helio is on site. Yeah, I'm listening. On site. Okay. Can you hear better now? Yeah. Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. So, All right. So, Helio, you need to continue your microphone off, your microphone off, because you, your, your microphone caused an echo for the class. Okay. 
So one more time, had is the first action, right? This is the in the order for the time. Was is the second action because it's not complete. And the past tense is the action that interrupt. The okay, I, I have a question. Um, and, and the first uh, sentence is a past perfect? Correct. The second sentence is a past continuous? Correct. And the last one is a simple pass. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is correct. So is you don't have to go in that order, but just remember, you're going to talk about what happened before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and after. For example, what did you do last year? Okay, what were you doing when you remember the pandemic? or when the president ordered the quarantine or the different things, okay? Okay. Okay, so now only is correct. Always is correct because it's your ideas and what happened in your life. So with your partners, explain what happened in your life and what were some of the situations.
Okay, so what we're looking at is all of those things that happened in the past, the different order. The first activity I had, right? So for example, to go to Inglés Corporativo, I had registered. This is the first, right? When? Ah, I was working in my company. Then I received an email. This is the idea, the order that you have. The first action, the next action, and the following action. The difference is that the three actions are in the past. In the past, those are the three actions. And that is the order for the action. Had, was, with ing, or were, if it's plural, and then the simple past. So did you ever go to another country? Did you ever go to Guatemala, Honduras? To, do you ever go on vacation? To maybe to a taco, uh, I don't know, El Tunco? Just seven? Yeah, I, I, I've been. Uh, can I talk? Yes, go ahead, Helio. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been in Mexico. I've been in, in Guatemala. Uh, many times, I travel to to Mexico City in further further America. Mexico City. I've been in Guatemala also. I've seen many. You know, but uh, it's for me, it's been a yeah, good experience yeah, traveling. Traveling. So when you travel, when you go to other countries, this is the idea. What do you need to do before you go to Mexico City, before you go to Guatemala? Ah, I had bought the airline ticket. I had uh, okay. my suitcase. This okay. Is, yeah, for had. Had is the first thing or the thing you do before the situation. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I understand. So, okay. That. So imagine you are in the airport, you are in the bus station, you are in Picabus or Pullman Tour or Avianca, whatever. Ah, yeah. this is what happens here is I was traveling. I was going by bus. I was driving. I was flying. And then the next action, I was flying when I received a call or when the plane had an accident. Ah, these are for the next action. So mm -hmm. had before the actions was or were in the moment and then the simple past is the thing that interrupts or things that happen. Uh, okay, is the order or is the order of the, uh, in the sentence? Correct, is the order in the sentence for things in the past tense. So now okay. we All right. to do. Now we are going to take a look at some videos about traveling and what happened before or after or what happened in the activities, right? In this cultural shock. Okay, so here okay. we have a small video about cultural experiences and how the cultures are in different parts of the world or in different countries. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes. 
Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camilla and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. <laughs> Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Okay, that's the first thing. Now you see, what do we have about this situation? Well, we're talking about her trip to Brazil, right? And her trip to Sweden. So, ah, first she says, ah, I had lived in, or I, uh, I was born in Scotland or, or in Sweden. I had lived in Brazil. I went, ah, uh, because all of these words tell us the order. What is first, what is second, what is third, okay? Let's listen and watch, I'm sorry. Let's listen and watch to the next ones. What other countries and other topics do they talk about? Now. Let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Okay. So now we're talking about the experiences that you had in your trip, in your travel, and things like this. We're going to talk with our partners about it. Don't worry about the grammar tense. Just try to use it naturally. Talk about your trip. If you went to a taco, if you went to a Cerro Verde, to, if you didn't go to another country, it's no problem. The important is to talk about a trip that you have gone and what happened. Don't worry about the grammar, only talk about the things. That way it's more natural to get the ideas. Okay? Okay. 
Okay. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You're a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila. And I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four. And I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that, but it's strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. My name is Delfino Valdez, and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico, and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman, and she was making me lunch one day, and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. 
Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day. The beans, the rice. Okay, so tell me about your trip. What happened? What? Let's see if you're using the tenses correctly. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Let's have a few people volunteer. Oh, uh, I have been to Honduras many times, and uh. Uh, I have been in Honduras uh, for five. I I have no. I live in Honduras for five years, and when I stayed, when I when I was in that country, I visited many places, and but I like the most. Uh, I like the the beach, beach mm -hmm. in that country because they uh, the they are uh, like a pool. It's not the same. Uh, it's different to El Salvador because it's the Atlantic Ocean, and is uh, not uh, there. There is not a huge a uh, huge um, wave and I love it. I went to the Tela and it's a city and, and near to the, the, the ocean. And I ate uh, delicious food with coconut. Uh, for example, I ate uh, uh, seafood with coconut when soup, seafood soup with coconut, mm -hmm. and it was delicious. Okay. And, yes. <laughs> oh, no, it's good, it's good. Uh -huh. When was this, Roxana? When did you go? Oh, uh, mm, in, I, I returned in, returned in 2004. Okay. okay. I went in, yeah. All right, good. And that's the idea. The idea is when we use the grammar, when we learn it, is we want to practice using it naturally. Talk about our experience, the life, what happened, what went, and only speak and try to make it natural. Okay, guys? Tomorrow, we're going to continue. We're going to talk more about cross-culture and practice using the past, past continuous, and of course, the past perfect. Okay? Okay. But it's a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It takes time. It takes time to practice. We need time to practice. Okay? Okay. All right, guys. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Goodbye. See you. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Good